this is the sibling's trouble and I'm going to show you how to play. Now, this is a prototype version of the game, but all the components are here, so it should give you a really good idea of what, what we're doing. And The Sibling's Trouble is a cooperative, car-driven storytelling game. And it's all based around this adventure deck. So we're going to build that adventure deck, and the first thing we have to do is select the location we're going to go to, and, and then that's the, the location for the entire game. So we have the Hillside Caves, Abandoned Junkyard, Mystic Waters, and the Ancient Forest. Players get to pick which they'd want to do, and in this case, we'll pick Hillside Cave. So I'll take the other three and set them aside, and we won't be using them. And so we're going to be building out that adventure. And well, But first, what we'll do is we'll uh, each play as a character. So as I mentioned, we have Adventure, uh, Mischief, Mayhem, and Danger. And, and, and these are the siblings' trouble. The game actually comes with blanks as well for players to pick their own, use their own pictures and their own characters, because this is really about going back to, to your childhood. But for the, the purpose of the game, we have with the, these four. And we also start by placing uh, home. The home card is essentially where the adventure starts, but also where it ends, either in success or failure. And I'll talk more about that. After you have this base set up, each kid gets their trouble die, which is color coordinated to each child, and also a token, which represents one use of their special ability, which I'll talk about as well. So you hand all these out and we're, we're getting ready to go. So now we're going to build our adventure deck and you, you build it backwards from the end of the adventure to the, to the start at the entrance of, in this case, the hillside cave. So what we're going to do is we have the journey end card, which is at the bottom. And then we have some reference cards and some uh, player blanks, which I'll set aside. And then on top of that, we're going to start building that adventure. And so the end of the adventure ends with the boss. Each location comes with two, you select one. And then what you're going to do from there is place a series of uh, location and path cards um, in an order. Now, the order is in the, in the manual, of course, and you get used to it as you go. And so what you're going to do is place a, um, the, the, the journey home card, boss, and then a path card, and then a location or encounter card. Then we're going to place two path cards, another encounter, one path card, the big secret card, which I'll talk about. And actually, you only use one big secret card uh, per adventure. So we have the rest of them, which we're not going to use. Set those aside. And then uh, on top of the big secret card, we have an encounter, uh, two more path cards, and then the entrance. So this right here is our adventure deck. Now, what we do is we create a little space here because we'll have the adventure and we'll, we'll discard as we go. But we will also have um, epic treasure that we'll select from backpack treasure items, uh, which we'll draw from, um, path cards, and, and those location cards. So I'm keeping it a little tight uh, in frame because of uh, you know making this all look and, and feel good, but essentially these cards are your draw piles which you're gonna move into your adventure. So you have your kids set up, everyone's their player, this is a four player game, and we have some other tokens and uh, pieces and dice, which we'll talk about, but then you're gonna get started. And actually the first thing you do is everyone gets a uh, treasure to start with, and we'll talk about this. So everyone starts with a treasure, and we're gonna start the adventure. Before I get into anything, here's something that's very important about this game. This is a game about storytelling. There are dice, there are some rules, there's the adventure deck, but it's about getting in character and telling the story as you go. And what, what's a little bit different is while everyone can work and play together, um, telling the story together, because of the way the adventure deck works and the play goes, everyone gets their turn. So it's a cooperative game. We're all trying to do uh, work together, but I'm still gonna draw the card. I get to see it myself, and then I reveal it, and I move the story around. Um, that's really sort of what's special about uh, the sibling's trouble. So to continue though, as a, like a warm up, the first thing everyone does is they describe what they bought, uh, brought on the adventure and why as we get going. So, you know, uh, say I was adventure and I would sort of say, so it's Saturday and, and, and mom and dad are super busy because they're getting ready for this cocktail party they're gonna have this night and, and they've been screaming all day and, and I figured it's a great time for us to sneak out and, and, and go have some fun. So on the way out, I grab my uh, trusty walking stick because we always end up going, you know, danger likes to 
go into these really hard to reach places and he's a little bit bigger than me. So the walking stick makes a big difference and sometimes I have to drag Mayhem along or Mischief along to get going. But so I, I've brought the, the walking stick with me. And so then you continue and each player, then uh, each sibling, um, Mischief here has some marble she's brought along. Um, Mayhem has brought her book safe. Uh, and Danger here has brought his weird contraption. And each player goes through the process of revealing and describing those cards. And then uh, comes back to Adventure, and Adventure then guides us into the first location. So, um, you know, each turn you're going to just essentially draw the top card and then resolve. So the cave entrance, um, the entrance cards typically uh, uh, suggest that you find the entrance or discover it or whatever is appropriate per location. But so for me, I would say something like, so we were, so it says, you know, the hillside cave is hidden. Describe how it was discovered and opened to enter. Now, again, I don't read that text aloud. That's sort of game text, but I'm going to read it to myself and then describe it. And so we're on our adventure and, you know, mischief has her marbles and mayhem with her book safe. And I'm just trying to run ahead uh, to get in front of danger. Who's always ahead of me. And I just like slam into the stink wall. Like it's just a wall of stink. And I have, it's just it like my eyes start tearing and everyone just like, Ugh! and we, we start looking around and, and it's, it's a foul, foul smell, but we just sort of have to figure out like what it's coming from. And we followed along down this hill and into this ravine. And then on the right side, we see this, this, what looks to be a cave, but it's covered up. So we peel away all the branches and, and bushes and everything the way. And we find this cave entrance. Right. And so that was my turn. I, I pr pr progressed the story and it's important to understand that some turns, just result in progressing the story. Other turns have roles, other turns use tokens. So, you know, the mechanics are all about driving that story forward. So we're now, you know, we've, we've gone into the entrance and that was my turn. And then, so it would be Mischief's turn. And now we're gonna work our way through the adventure deck and it's a series of path cards as you saw me place out, as well as the encounter cards. So there's two types of path cards. There is uh, an event card uh, which has a little uh, exclamation point, and there are the search uh, location cards. So an event card would be like fell in a hole. So like uh, Mischief would sort of dart in, uh, you know, I, I crawled under Adventure's leg to get ahead, and I, and as soon as I, you know, got past him in his walking stick, I, I tripped and I fell into this hole. This card says you, you have to uh, go home, and I'll talk about home in, in a second, or explain how you use the treasure to escape, and then uh, discard that treasure. So maybe uh, in the case of uh, Mischief, she's got marbles. So this is part, part of this game is telling that story and weaving those elements together. Um, it might've been easy to explain how the walking stick was used to save me in the hole, but actually the marbles were. So maybe in this case, um, Mischief says, well, so I fall into this hole and it's total darkness and I can, I can feel around that there's ledges leading downwards and, and I'm, you know, it just, I don't know where, where I can stand and where I can't. So what I do is there's a little light coming through. So I open up my bag of marbles and I roll them across the floor and I can see them falling into these like ravines and caverns. But I, I basically can see a, a line of marbles back, back out to the, to the, uh, to, 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 to adventure. And so that's what I do. And so that would have resolved this um, hole. And in this case, um, she would have to discard her, her, her marbles. Uh, and then those two cards are used. So there's lots of different examples. Not all events are bad. Some of them are good um, and that kind of thing. So uh, she would have taken her turn and then uh, Mayhem would go next. Now, the other type of cards are these search cards. So in this case, you've come to a dark alcove and one, this has a uh, fear counter uh, text which applies to the boss, which I'll describe in, in a second. But if the boss hasn't been revealed, um, it, it, nothing happens. But then for these search locations, essentially you roll the search die to determine what happens next. You could go into the dark alcove and find a new path, a new new, new event or, or, or location to go to. So dark alcove could lead to ancient ruins, or you could run into a creature or a mysterious traveler. You could find a treasure. One one symbol is the, the card symbol, which leads you to the special uh, text on each of these cards. And so in this case, let's say I, that's what I rolled. It would say cornered. Draw an unused location card and give it a uh, plus one star, then resolve it, okay? So in this case, what that would mean is, and as a player, you sort of do all this and then you reveal. So I've rolled, I draw that location card, I get the dumb troll, so I would say, uh, so this is um, mayhem, you know, you know, typical mischief. She's like on the ground, she's dirty already. We've only been on this adventure for like five minutes 
and she's a mess. She's covered. She's lost her marbles, literally. And, um, you know, I, I'm in this dark alcove, and then suddenly I hear this noise behind me, and there's this gigantic, like, blumbering, star, dark, dumb troll. It just looks, it's just sort of like, but it's big and scary, and, and we have to get past it. And so another thing, and I, I'm going to talk about an encounter here, but another thing to explain about this game is, right, it's not always about being violent. You know, when you are in, faced with an encounter, you're going to try to overcome the encounter. But if you're successful, you can overcome it in any way. You don't need to hit it with a stick or knock it over or kill it. You could trick it or surprise it or trade with it or befriend it. That's up to you. It's up to the players and how they want to play the game. But so in this case, the, the troll has been revealed. And since uh, Mayhem and, and, and the siblings are cornered, uh, she then would also add a plus one token to that troll. So instead of being a six, uh, he is a seven. So now let's talk about encounters. So in an encounter, an encounter uh, is always, until the boss at least, always initiated by a single player. In this case, it's Mayhem. And each player, uh, sibling, has their own troubled die. Now, um, they're, they're similar in that they have star values, uh, your, your special ability, and an epic fail roll, but um, they have different distributions of stars. And essentially, the player is going to roll that die to determine you know, whether or not they succeed in the encounter. Um, oftentimes you don't, and we'll talk about that. So if, if I roll, and I rolled, say, let's just say I rolled a five. So the dumb troll is a six plus one is a seven. You need to meet it to beat it, so I'm short, right? Now, if we just called it there, what would happen is, you know, um, Mish, uh, Mayhem, rather, would tell a story about the dumb troll knocking her over or maybe tricking her, or, or somehow she gets, you know, knocked out or beat, or, or, or she goes home, essentially. And she then has to spend her next turn at home explaining how she got away from mom or dad or somehow figured out a way to get back to the group. That's what she does on her next turn. At the same time, if all the siblings are at home, if mom and dad see all four of you, or three, however many players are playing, inside at the same time, they're going to lock that door and, you know, give you a dinner and send you to bed. That's the end of the game. So that's the lose condition. So being sent home, you always have an opportunity to come back, but you don't all want to get sent home at the same time or um, the game's over. So in this case, um, Mayhem is short uh, on her role. So there's a couple things. Well, one, on the dumb troll car, it says, explain just how dumb the troll is to reduce the dumb troll star rating by one. And so... In the story she's telling in the dark alcove, if she talks about how, you know, she the dumb troll has her cornered, um, but then a little a little like rat runs by and the dumb troll's like, oh, what's that? And he starts like looking down at the rat while, rat while she's standing right in front of him, or some other relatively dumb or stupid behavior. Um, he would then be minus one. So in this case, let's say, you know, just for the to show it, we take that that bonus he had and removed it. So it's still short. Uh, I have a five, he has six. The next thing you could do is use one of your treasures. So if um, Mayhem uses her book safe in the story about how she defeats or uh, successfully gets past the dumb troll, she can have a plus one to that roll. So that would make this a six, and then it would be six and a six, and she'd be successful. In addition, on many cards, you can do something else, like uh, plus one additional star in stories about a secret hiding place. So if you book, use the book safe, use a secret hiding place, explain how the dumb troll is really super, super dumb, you can effectively uh, help the encounter. Now, let's say for a moment um, she rolled something even lower. Let's say she rolled a three. Uh, using all of those things, she would not have been able to get that roll high enough. Now there's some other options. First, she can ask for a sibling assist. You can ask one other player to join in the join in the encounter to successfully uh, defeat the troll, uh, and in that case, that sibling's going to roll their die and do exactly what um, Mayhem did. That's a great way to overcome uh, one of these uh, encounters. But at the same time, if you lose, now suddenly both of you are sent home. So there's an inherent risk to helping each other out and needing to balance that as you go through the adventure. Um, there are a couple other things that can happen. One thing that could happen is you could roll your special ability. Your special ability. Uh, on all players means a re-roll, but it also means something else. So in the case of Mayhem, if we look at the back of her card, it's tricky. It's take a plus one star tro token and give another player a negative one star token, then re-roll using that player's trouble die. 
explain how you used your sibling to help you. So essentially, the idea here is Mayhem takes advantage of something from another sibling helping her out, but somehow, you know, not helping them out. So, you know, um, for example, the dumb troll is looking at her and then she says, hey, look, danger's over there or, or whatever, or, or picks up, picks up mischief and shakes it in front of, shakes her in front of the dumb troll or whatever to, uh, to, to help with the encounter and, and then can get a, a, a re-roll and, and, and a better roll. The other thing that can happen though, is you can roll an epic fail. An epic fail is, um, something so you, you've, you've, you've blundered so poor, so, so terribly that you've rendered yourself, um, useless. Uh, and in this case, maybe in encountering the dumb troll, she, uh, you know, the, you know, trips and, and rolls right up into his feet. And, 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 and all he has to do is sort of like, well, oh, what's this? And he picks her up. Um, now, in this case, you can have a sibling rescue, which means a player can assist you. But unfortunately, they don't get the benefit of your role or any of your items because you're, you're basically knocked out. So through doing all this, you are able to successfully um, defeat the, the dumb troll. And then in this case, uh, you get whatever the reward is, which is the yellow at the bottom. Oftentimes it might be drawing a treasure card or rolling the treasure die, which could give you uh, treasures, uh, a chance at an epic drop, uh, an epic treasure. Uh, but sometimes it can give you a benefit, which you get to describe uh, or uh, add a fear counter to, the, to the, the boss, which I'll talk about. One of the important things is if I roll a plus one token on the um, dumb troll, it doesn't mean I got a... Um, a plus one token, it means that as he ran off, he dropped his club and now I have my his club with me. So it's it's really about incorporating those results into your story. So so we've we've talked about the types of path cards, we've talked about the types of encounters, and you know, next up would have been Riddler in the Dark. And here, if you use a riddle in your story, you can reduce a star rating by one. So all sorts of creative and fun ways to to deal with these characters as you play. But then we get to the big secret. Now the big secret is the moment in, in, in the adventure where one of the characters, whoever draws the big secret, that is, um, has the chance to to explain the greater meaning to everything that's what's happening. So in this case, um, the, the big secret was you saw it in a dream. Last night you dreamt about this boss and about how you, have, uh, how you guys have to stop it. So in this case, what's going to happen is, let's say, it, it, there was a couple more times that would have went around, but let's say this is danger. So danger is going to go to the bottom of the deck here, and he is actually going to, and this is all to himself for the moment, look at the boss. In this case, it's the dark troll. And and then also draw an epic treasure. Oh, in this case, it was your family pet. So here, danger might be like, I say like, let's say we had just successfully tricked the dumb troll into, you know, walking around in circles, getting tired and falling back asleep. But then, then you know, danger's like, oh, I just remember, I had a dream about this. I, I, I saw that troll walking around in a circle, and but there was another troll, this dark, evil, terrible troll. And, and you know, he, he actually took Tekka, our, 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 our dog. He took him and, and he has him. And, 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 and it, must be, it must be real. I know um, we, we just thought Tekka was out and about, but have, I don't think either of us, any of us saw him this morning. So we better, we better, we got to find this. We got to figure it out because this is, we got to get Tekka and, and it's, it's just too real. It wasn't just a dream. And so you then take the dark troll and uh, Tekka and you put them back uh, in, in the deck where uh, at the end of the adventure. Now, a couple other things happen. Let me just make a little bit more room. So when the dark, uh, excuse me, when the boss is revealed, you place one fear counter on the boss. Now each boss uh, gain something or an advantage um, for the, the, uh, the fear counters, whether it's uh, plus an additional star or they destroy an item from each player or various things. So the more fear counters that are on the, the, the dark, dark troll or the boss, uh, the more dangerous they are. Um, and as you play, you can roll a fear counter uh, on either of the, uh, the treasure and the search die. Um, you can get cards that add, add fear counters remove them. But the point here, again, is a fear counter doesn't represent a fear counter. It represents some uh, characteristic or uh, uh, embellishment on the story about how nasty and mean the dark troll is or how bad he smells or, you know, what, what, what his weapon looks like. Things that just make him scarier. And when you get to remove him, 
you get courage or you figure out something you didn't know or you reveal a weakness. So you're using these as moments to sort of expand on that big secret and end that story. Or maybe Danger remembers something else from his dream. Um, the other thing that happens is um, bosses are uh, group battles. So the, the value on the boss uh, to start is for a two-player game. But then if you um, are playing with three players, you'll add the uh, 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 three-player boss uh, bonus on. And if it's a uh, four-player game, in this case, you'll add the other one. So um, that's just a little balancing to make sure that you're getting a, a great experience no matter how many players you're playing with. And so then you continue. So the boss is revealed. And as we go, he's getting stronger, stronger, scarier, and scarier. And then we proceed through various um, path and... Um, um, path and event cards, um, spiders, the sort, story sphinx, uh, etc., working our way to said boss. And, you know, mysterious place, there was a handsome troll, stolen supplies, tracks, and this is a good one, it gives you a, a bonus because you're, you're, you're tracking in on, on the boss. And then also, you, you, you know, we probably would have gotten some more treasures, um, like superhero cape, or 1928 Penny, or an action figure. So all sorts of fun stuff. Um, maybe even rolled an epic treasure. The next one would have been Torch of Danger. And there's one one epic treasure, you know, specially for each kid that gives them a special bonus. So that would have been a good one to get. So we work our way through. We get to our final encounter. And here, everyone works together to, um, to defeat the boss. And boy, it really takes it. Really takes good combination of skills. You may you can use your your ability once per game to get a reroll, which is a big deal, uh, versus the boss. And um, you know, so hopefully you're successful. Sometimes you're not, and uh, you defeat the dark troll, or befriend, or fall in love with whatever makes sense. You save Tekka, and then uh, there's the journey home card, and and the last person essentially draws this card to wrap up the story, close out the big secret, and then describe the, the, the journey home uh, as a group, uh, whereas each player also gets to pick up an item from that, from that adventure and take it home with them and sort of explain how they hit it for mom and dad. But that then becomes the starting item in the next game, sort of giving you a little sense of continuity between your adventures. Um, that's the game. So lots of different locations. You're using only a small set of any of the cards, so there's a nice sense of... Uh, variation and change as you go and then as you weave each story together it really plays very different as we enjoy uh, each each sequence and each 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 story and it's all about that right again we made the mechanics light I mean there's, there's a lot of different things going on but it's a single role it's mostly about getting these combinations of things and having to weave together a story to to go on this adventure together and hopefully everyone had a great time for a nice little 30 minute experience so this is the siblings trouble um, these are, again, prototype components, but I think they'll be fantastic when they're, they're printed. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks. Yeah.